Hello, glad to see you here. So last time we did the login form, but we didn't add any validation and we didn't write any tests. So that's what we are gonna do on this episode. So let me show you the problem. If we inspect the HTML and we change the type of the input to text, we can pass an empty email and let me change it again. So we can pass an empty email, an empty username, and the user gets created. So this is the problem and this is what we are gonna test and fix. So let's come here and on the login service, we are gonna create a new function to test. And before writing any tests, I'm gonna create a integration test file and on this file, we're gonna create the connection to the database so we can run our test. So this is what you normally do on the test main. You make sure to run all the other tests. Um, but this time we're gonna create a utility function. There, so this way we can return normal errors on this setup tree function and also make sure to defer some uh, code. So the first step is uh, create a connection to the database. For that, we're gonna use uh, Docker test. Docker test is a library for Go that allows to connect to Docker. So we're gonna import it and create a pool. All right, now with this pool, we can create the cockroach container. So inside here, we are gonna use the cockroach repository and the latest tag. And we're gonna pass some arguments. So start single node. And the listen address is not required on this case. Make sure to close the, the container at the end. This is gonna delete it basically, so we don't have dangling uh, containers. Now we're gonna use our cockroach container and create the database connection. So this is gonna be pretty much what we did on the main.go. We're gonna take the connection from here, this same one, but we're gonna change the host and the port. So the host port can be taken from the container using this get host port and passing the port. And that's it, but there is a query now. Um, this can fail because the container might be still doing some startup things. So we are gonna try to run this inside a retry function. So We move everything inside the retry function and make sure to override this uh, database. So here, we're gonna define our error variable and here we're gonna just do this. All right. So now we can call this function up here. We pass the cockroach container and for the retry function, we can pass this pull retry function. And that's it. Now we have the database connection. We just need to create a package level variable here. Maybe test queries. And we can initialize it here. So this setup T is gonna be called from the test main and it's gonna make sure the test queries is initialized. So now from the login, we can use it. I think I forgot though to run the database migrations. Yeah. There we go. Okay, now let's try to test the first thing. So we want to make sure the email is, is valid. So we can build a service passing our test queries. Let's pass some invalid email like this one. And we expect to receive an invalid email error. For that, we are gonna use an assert library. This one. So we are gonna come here 
and import it. And we can do this uh, cert equal error. We pass the testing variable or error and the expected error string. So this will be invalid email. All right, now we can try to uh, run the test, but we know this will fail because there is no invalid email error right now. So let's try to implement it. So here at the login input, I'm gonna add an additional function now called validate. This validate function is gonna return an error. And to check for the email, I'm gonna use a regular expression uh, from the previous Nakama code. So here from the user service, I'm gonna come down here, up here, yeah, here. And um, here's the regular expression I use for validating the email address. I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna take it here. And I'm gonna create a new function down below. There we go. So this regular expression is gonna check that uh, we have a string that start with one or more characters that are not a uh, space or an at symbol, followed by an at symbol, then the same, then a period, and then the same again, and it's gonna end. So it's basically something at something that something. All right. So we can use now this function from here. So if it's not a valid email, we're going to return this error. So let's define it here, like so. And we can call this validate method from the login function here. There we go. Now we can run the test. All right, I see an error here. Uh, I think this is because we forgot to import the driver here. There we go. All right, and I see the test uh, passing. If you go back and change it, uh, maybe we don't perform the validation. We're gonna see that the test fail and we get a user not found error instead. All right, cool. Let's continue and add more tests. So for the username, I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna take the regular expression from here. And that should do it. Now let's come to the test. So to try out the username, we need to pass a valid email first. So I'm gonna create a function to generate valid emails. For that, I'm gonna take this uh, string generator, copy it here, and rename some parts. So this random string generator is gonna generate uh, the given amount of uh, characters based on this dictionary. It uses the, um, the math random package, but it's okay for, for testing. All right, so now we can create a gen email function maybe. And that's it. So the email is gonna be this one. And the username is gonna be maybe nope. This need to be a pointer though. So for that, uh, I'm gonna create a new utility function too like so but i think we're gonna create many pointers during this uh, series so i'm gonna make this generic there we go so now this can be a pointer and we expect to get a invalid username let's give it a try all right cool so let's continue come here to the login service and the next error we can test is uh, this one, user not found. To get this error, we basically need to pass uh, no username, and we should get user not found. All right, nice. The next one is gonna be this one, username taken. So let's come here. So to get this error, we need to create a second user uh, using the same email from the one before. I'm gonna create a new function to generate uh, valid usernames. So 
So in this case, we expect no error. But on the, on the second time we execute this same one, we expect um, the username to be taken. Like so. Let's give it a try. All right, awesome. So the last one, I think there is no more known errors. So we can check uh, for the OK case, which actually is already covered uh, up here, I think. Yeah, no error. Yeah, it's already covered. But let's do it again for the sake of. All right, we know this is gonna pass, but there is an additional check I want to make, and that is that the email must always be lowercase. So. So this is the test. If we try to log in with a uppercase email, we expect the returning user back to be in lowercase. This is gonna fail, we don't have any uh, code for this. So yeah, that's it. So we expect a lowercase email and we got the same uppercase. This is a problem because um, if you try to log in uh, on the first time, passing a uppercase email, it's gonna save it at uppercase on the database on, on the next time when you try to log in. If you pass a, another case, a lower case maybe, it's gonna fail. Um, so let's always store it as lower case on the database. So here on the login, I'm gonna create on the input actually a new function called prepare. So inside of here, we are gonna convert the email to lower case. And notice that I am using a pointer here to the login input. This is required for this to work. And on the login, we are gonna call our prepare method. So if execute the test again, there we go, it passes. And we can add some additional checks here. So if we try to log in again with the lowercase email, it should work too. And there we go. So I think we got everything covered. If you come now to the login function and we toggle the test coverage, you can see in green the code that is being covered by your test. So it's mostly all covered. The only one in red is the um, internal errors from the database. And really there is no need to test for those. So let's quickly iterate over what we did. Um, so we created integration tests using Docker tests. We did set up the cockroach container and made the database connection and set up a test queries variable here we can reuse in our test. So on each test, um, we perform all the known errors and we did some uh, expectation at the end. We made use of this assertion library and we are using random generated input to run the test and we got good code coverage in our code. So that's all for this video. On the next one, we're gonna make some small fixes to the form UI. So make sure to leave any question down below and I'm gonna see you in the next one. See ya.